So, the April update. Now, if you're like me, then this will be the first time actually diving into what the quote-unquote April update has to offer. If you're not like me and know everything about anything ever, then I suggest you don't watch this video as I go over basically every bit of useful information regarding the update coming on April 12th. The reason it has taken me so long to make a video on this information or even really care about it um, is a mix between laziness, being busy with other stuff, and just not staying in the loop with Destiny to be honest. But anyways, that's beside the point. Let's stop eating around the bush and get right into what the April update has to offer. In my opinion, the biggest thing about this update is the light increase. The actual reason anyone even plays Destiny is to grind for light. It would have been stupid if Bungie did not raise the cap, so I'm glad they did. The new light is now 335. It's a bit of a weird number to choose, but whatever is their choice. This light increase affects the difficulty and the rewards from Prison of Elders, Court of Orcs, Heroic Strikes, Nightfalls, King's Fall Raid, Iron Banner, and last but not least, Trials of Osiris. This means that all these activities are capable of giving you 335 light gear. Now the main thing of this update is the completely reworked Prison of Elders. They added 8 new bosses to it. They will all likely be taken oriented, but we'll have to wait to see. On top of this, a new mode was introduced for Prison of Elders entitled Challenge Mode. This mode will face you against 3 boss waves in a row, where the goal is to gain as much score as possible. Modifiers are added as a way to get more score for doing specific tasks. There is also a new quest and strike coming in the April update, although I'm not going to go into specific of these because, let's be honest, no one cares. King's Fall Normal now drops 320 light gear and Hard Mode drops 330 light gear. Out of nowhere, they make Court of Oryx relevant again by increasing the artifact drops to 335. One of my personal favorite changes coming is the way infusion works. Now it will make the items light that you are infusing the same as the item that you are using as infusion fuels light. That sentence is very close to making zero sense, but it's kind of difficult to explain with words. Another really awesome addition is chroma customization. There are new certain sets of cosmetic gear which will change color depending on what color of chroma ring you are using. This is a very welcome addition, not only adding variety and customization, but it really makes Destiny feel like an MMORPG more than it ever was. On top of chroma sets of gear, there are also taken theme sets of gear. Once again, great addition. Probably the most controversial thing coming in the update is the addition of Sterling Treasure. These are treasure chests that can be earned three times a week. Once you have completed a level 41 PoE and one match in the featured weekly crucible playlist, your character will be awarded one. These chests contain a guaranteed legendary cosmetic armor piece and a chance at a chroma shader, a ship, faction, rep boosters, and some other stuff. This brings me to why these are very controversial at the moment. Because they can be bought with real money through Tess Everest. Although it's not necessarily pay to win since all items inside the treasure chest are cosmetic, the rep boosters can be used as a huge advantage to getting new light and higher light gear. Also, the implementation of more items being able to bought through real money only raises the question, how far will Bungie go before real pay to win is evident inside of Destiny? Moving on, faction packages now drop chroma gear at 330 light, PoE stuff is chroma, and Challenge of the Elders can drop at 335. Also, lots of exotics are coming back. I can't be really asked to find out which ones if I'm honest, but just know they're coming back. The website is showing some updates to Warlock classes, but who even really cares? No one even plays Warlocks anyway. Oh wait. Everyone and their grandmother has a filthy sun singing Warlock with year one fell winters on their back and a thorn in their hand. Maybe I should check out <laughs> what changes are being made. Let's see here. Um, Lower shield, reduced frequency of flame shield, brimstone has a new damage boost, fireborn won't last longer. Fireborn won't last as long, um, Storm Trance unable to bind, blind, unable to pop bubbles, decrease super time, vampire shit damage less, vamp, vampire shit refresh rate less. Okay, so basically what I'm gathering from this information is they're still gonna be OP, because they can resurrect. Alright, let's move on. Okay, some balance and playlist updates, alright, nice, hmm, I think that's everything, let me just, oh wait, what is that? Do you guys see that? Hidden, hidden away in the farthest corner at the very bottom of this long page, is that... Is that what I think it is? Oh wow, it is! It is! A noob still carrying blues in his vault. <laughs> what an idiot! Vault space is so limited. Who would be stupid enough to hold that many blues? Man, whatever. He's probably just starting out. We'll give him a chance. I was actually just about to end this video until I remembered something really cool about the new update. A new exotic snipe rifle called the Zen Meteor, I believe. It looks really cool, and it seems like it has potential to do some serious damage. 
Anyways, I can't wait for everyone on every platform to enjoy this beautiful spectacle. Uh, wait. I'm, I'm getting breaking news from Bungie headquarters right now. Hi, Deej. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about the new sniper. Oh, okay. Really? Why not? They paid you a lot of money? How much? Oh, ooh, that is a lot of money. Okay, yeah. S see ya. Okay, turns out the gun is only on PS4. 